Alright, I know what you're thinking. What the hell is this? Well, this is another view appreciation gift from Dave Payne. And this is a mug with the same picture as the last two he sent me, but this one... is physically bigger than the other two we sent last time for, you know, people with those sausage fingers that can actually grab this. So we're breaking out the carrot here and we're going to use it. Now, if any of you guys own this, don't go bothering the, bother buying those K-Cups. What you got to do is buy yourself one of these guys and you basically pop out the piece that's in there which is this little contraption here and they give you a new one so that you can use whatever kind of coffee you want in there so I'm from Boston so after we pick that up off the floor and wash it we're gonna be using our Dunkin Donuts coffee you guys on the west coast can use your French vanilla and if anybody says that they they want to use Honeydew Donuts coffee, you should be shot. So, I don't even know if they make their own coffee. Coffee sucks anyway. So, you fill up Mr. Cage here with our Dunkin' Donuts French vanilla, because it's delicious. Put it inside, tighten you down, put this back in here, clean up all the coffee grounds off the table so the wife doesn't yell at us, and press the little button. Don't worry, it'll come out eventually. There it is. And we got ourselves a nice, fresh brewed cup of coffee. So let me drink this, and then we'll go down the shop and start to play. Hello, and welcome back to the shop. And today's project, we're actually going to be getting to that tool post uh, locking nut on the top. Uh, my biggest problem was just getting the stock. And one of you has recommended uh, metal supermarkets on one of my videos. So uh, there's one in Woburn that I never knew about. So I took a ride down there one Saturday and actually met the owner, Gary. Um, I'll have pictures of this stuff when I get to the bench. Uh, super, super nice guy. Showed me around this place, showed me what he had. He has a lot of structural steel and, and, and channels and shapes and stuff like that. And a decent amount of metal in the place. And he caters to small orders. And like I said, I just walked in there, told him what I needed. And within 15 minutes or so, he cut it and I was out the door. Now, I wanted uh, stress proof for the, the handle. He didn't have any in stock, but he could get it, but I just wanted to get it that day. So, we got to sell some 1045 instead, which is perfectly fine. It's just a little less uh, machinable than 1144, but still pretty good. And a little less gummy than 10, 1018. And this is hardenable. Hard, hard, yeah, that is a word. This is hard, hard, no, hardenable. This is able to be hardened if you need it. It's also available in um, cold rolled form and also ground uh, shafting if you need it. So we got ourselves a three foot piece of that. Uh, this is inch and a half. And I like to do, you know, half sizes. It's easier for me to stock a, a few pieces of metal. Um, in half sizes once you get into you know over an inch than it is for me to stock say quarter sizes or eighth sizes or something like that 
Um, it's just easier for me to cut it down and less expensive for me just because I'm in my cellar and you know we're not we're not selling this stuff. So anyway, we're gonna be using this. It's a super super nice place. If you guys have a chance, go ahead and check it out. Um, also, we have some new tool acquisitions which we'll show you over here on the bench. But first, there's just a few pictures I took at work that I wanted to put that I forgot to put on the last video that I'm gonna put on here. And they're basically from the top of a building um, right on the corner of State Street in Boston, down in, in the financial district, um, with some nice views from the top of this place. So there's just three quick pictures which I'll throw up here. Okay, so uh, this is the guy that I met, uh, Gary, and like I said, he's the owner of it. And uh, you can call him and order what you want, you can also do this online. I find it better to talk to a real person if you can, um, just so you can get a relationship with that person and um, you know they'll, they'll be willing to help you out. So like I said, he could get whatever you needed, some, some of the stuff he carried in stock, some of the stuff he's able to order, but pretty much he'll be able to get what you need. Uh, I got a nifty little metric conversion chart, the also has gauge charts and schedules, uh, pipe schedules, charts are always good to have around the shop. And this is just one of the brochures that he gave me, and kind of a list of what, uh, what you can get. Now, my understanding is the way this works is it's a national company, meaning that there are, there are a bunch of these. But each one is individually owned, each one is franchised. Um, so obviously this is a franchise owner up here in, uh, in Woburn and he's been there for I think he said six or eight months or something like that. Anyway, super nice guy and definitely a place to, to be able to get metal without having to pay shipping charges and, or anything like that. So uh, let's get to some tools that I, new tools that I picked up and go through some of these real quick. So first is just a uh, brand new Starrett 6 inch scale and uh, this one is uh, 50th, 100th, 32nds and 64ths. You can never have too many 6 inch scales around. Also I picked up these small hole gauges. Now there are two in here and one belongs in this case and one doesn't. The one that belongs in this case is the smaller one, not this larger one. Um, this is a 82. 9A and a 829B. And um, they were three bucks each, so six dollars for these. And I picked them up, they're in, they're in good shape. The actual little ball anvil there, there's no dings on it, and the little wedge isn't dinged up at all. So, something we may be able to put to use eventually. Also, picked up a set of Starrett dividers here, which uh, I don't have a pair, so this is. Good for me, nice set of, of dividers, not bent, nice and pointy, so you're able to mark off and scribe and uh, do whatever you need to do layout work wise. Also there, I picked up, now this is across three weeks uh, since the last video that I showed, so also I picked up a set of start V blocks, and these are the ones that connect with the little bar there and what I found interesting is it only comes with one clamp but if you read the box it says one set and clamp so uh, this is actually I'm assuming is the way it comes with just the one clamp which I don't particularly understand but um, should be able to get another one if I need it but the one should be enough for now this is a uh, number 271 and they're in good shape no rust whatsoever and it has that characteristic uh, hardening color on it, that black kind of rainbow color going on there. That's from hardening these. And they're all in good shape. So you got the sharp V on one side and then that kind of shallow V, the U shape on the other side. So definitely handy to have around. And like I said, these are the ones that are connected with the little bar. Now I also picked up these, and for those of you who don't know what these are, I'm assuming a lot of you do, 
These are Hyman transfer punches. Now, what these are is uh, transfer screws, rather. So these are for different sizes. This is for inch and a half, 20, 5 16, 18. What's this one? 3 8 16 and quarter 20. Now, these were $4 a piece. Each one of these was 4 bucks, which is a really, really good buy. So, let's just go with the larger one because it's easier to see. Now, what these are, they look like set screws, but they have a point and a hex on the top. So, what you would do is if you needed to, to um, if you had a plate that had blind holes in it or some sort of hole pattern that you needed to transfer exactly to another plate, you could screw these into the hole and that's why that hex is there is because this actual storage thing here is actually the tool to tighten these in which engages that hex like that and you're able to tighten these up. So you tighten these into the hole till that hardened point is just above the, uh, the edge of your plate or part and then you put the other part over it and then whack the other part down and that will imprint the punch lines in the hole pattern into its mating piece so you can get it exact. And these are full sets. None of these are, are missing the screws. There's six in each. There's uh, six transfer screws in each tool here. So it's full ones on there. So definitely something handy to have around the shop. And uh, these, are, these are a bit pricey if you were to buy them outright. So you know, a set of them. And then the last thing I picked up was this drill chuck. Now this is a Jacobs, it's a 3A and this is eighth inch to 5 8 so I didn't have anything in this size. This is, this is not a super chuck, a, the ball bearing chuck, this is a regular chuck just like the other one that I have, the half inch one that I have, only this is larger. And I picked it up, you can see there's some, you know, a little dingus on the face here. I'm assuming that's from somebody seating this into something and whacking this edge with a hammer to seat it. Um, but the jaws are super, super crisp. Uh, I haven't checked accuracy or anything on this, but um, when you tighten it together, I mean, they all, they all mate together and they all look pretty, pretty crisp. Like sometimes you'll see uh, either a chip taken out the front or you'll see kind of a hollow worn in there from bits spinning on there, but they all look in decent shape and everything moves nice. Um, now you can see this is a actual, this is a number two Morse taper on here which is, fits my lathe, but this is a taper shank reducer. Underneath here is probably a, a number one Morse taper that they have into um, this Jacobs taper. So I can use it this way, but what I want to do is I actually want to, I'll eventually, I'll split this pull out that number one and get a real number two and uh, put it in there. I'll figure out what the actual um, taper on the chuck itself is because it, a lot of times they're listed on the chuck but this one is not. So I'm, I'm sure I can just look up the actual number and figure out what the actual taper of the chuck is and uh, pull this out and get that all squared away. But uh, all in all, a decent tool to have around the lathe. And also the the, uh, the handle here, the chuck wrench, and if you can see the handle of it, it's all chewed up from somebody probably using a cheater on it or something or putting this in a vise. I, I don't know what all that's about. I'm assuming that's from somebody sticking a cheater on here and tweaking it. It is slightly, slightly bent. You can see it there. Um, but I mean, but the splines and everything worked and um, you know, this doesn't look like it's been, the, the jaws itself don't look like they've been uh, over tightened and, and mushroomed or dinged up. Just this, this little face here which is, is in all honesty nothing. Um, all the moving parts look okay. So anyway, this was, on, this was only 14 bucks so um, even if it's a little worn, still decent buy. All right. So let me uh, pull my tool post off and bring it over here and kind of go through what the project is and uh, we'll kind of see what this tool post is all about and everything else. Alright, so this is my tool post off the lathe. This is a uh, phase two quick change tool post. Now, you can get these from Enco for like 180 bucks, 
plus they have you know usually 20% off or 15% off on free shipping sometimes combined so um, just wait for one of those sales if you want to pick this up now these are more expensive than the um, regular than the, the budget ones even though they are made in the same place they're both made in China but um, fit and finish on this is actually pretty decent the block is nicely ground um, the wedges are pretty good the only part that was that is that's rough is this center piece here um, you can kind of see I I had lapped this to smooth it out but the machining on the top is rough and this bore um, I, I doubt I don't think you can kind of see in there you might be able to you can see some of the roughness in there there you go you see it's a little chowdered in that bore but um, that all that is is clearance for the t-bolt which really doesn't make that much of a difference but all in all it's a, it's a good product if you want to see a little bit more of this um, check out my tool post primer video which you can uh, click this link right here to go to that and I kind of get a little more more in depth with this but anyway so this is the the T nut which has to be machined when you get this it's a big block but um, that goes on that and there's a um, a flange nut that tightens down on the top with a with a wrench now for whatever reason if you look this up online it says that this um, this bolt here is nine sixteenths well mine's not mine is metric mine is um, 14 millimeter by a uh, one and a half thread. So, um, just be aware of that. I had to go out and get a metric tap, and also the uh, tap drill size of that, which is 12 and a half millimeter, because I don't have any um, any metric drills in here at all. Actually, I got a couple, but they're smaller. So I went down to my local hardware store because I knew that. Uh, you know, Lowe's and Home Depot weren't going to have these, so I went down to um, my local True Value actually, and because they'll have everything. The only thing is they'll charge you an arm and a leg for it. So I picked this up and the drill, and this is a high-speed steel uh, tap. It's made in China. It costs 18 bucks, which I thought was a little expensive. The worst was this drill, though, because um, I had I had asked the, the kid that opened up the case for me to get this um, where the drills were, because I needed a 12 and a half millimeter drill. He says, "Oh, they're around in the lock case, in the in the in the uh, the Jober drill case." Like, okay, so that's um, Jobber drill, and that's the length of the drill uh, but you know what brand it is he's like oh I don't know so you know just grabbing it and going I didn't look at it or anything and I uh, went up to check out and this drill here which is made in China it is high speed steel it's coated um, is cost me twenty dollars so I thought that was just a little ridiculous um, I don't know, so we'll see how this works. It should work pretty fine. I tried it already, just in a piece of steel when I got home, just to make sure that it did, did cut okay. Because uh, if it didn't, it was going right back. Um, but it, everything seemed to work all, out all right, and that's kind of one of the shortcomings of, or you know, the shortfalls of my little shop down here is I don't have a lot of good drill bits. Um, the 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 uh, titanium nitride ones that you see me use are just cheap drill bits. That I, that I picked up in a set just to have a set of all of them. Um, I'm really, really lacking in quality drill bits, and um, so that's one of the things I've been been working on trying try, trying to get. It's just that they're, they're kind of expensive, which, um, I mean, you do get your money out of them, I'll give you that, but that's uh, another thing to add to the list, that's all. So um, let's set up on the lathe here. I'm gonna cut myself a piece off that rod, and um, our goal today is to, instead of using the nut to uh, tighten this down and loosen it, because I inevitably put the wrench somewhere and forget about it, we're going to make a, um, a nut with a handle on it so that we can tighten it down with the handle and loosen it with the handle. We don't need a wrench. Handles permanently attached to us. Pretty similar to double boosts. Um, tool post. The only difference is he used a hex. Uh, I'm going to use the regular round rod. So, um, like I said, let's cut a piece there, we'll set up on the lathe, and we'll start machining this. Alright, so I already faced off the end, I put a center drill in there, and I'm going to go in with a 3 8 drill, um, 
just to drill out most of it. Then I'll come in with the uh, 12 and a half millimeter drill just because I don't know exactly how well it's going to work on this material. So I know this will get through it. So hopefully we won't. I just don't want to blow out the 12 and a half millimeter drill right away. So we'll just pilot drill it with this just in case. So I'm going to go down um, at least one inch. I need uh, the hole to be tapped to at least one inch to clear the top of this this uh, bolt here. I got a hole drilled. So now we got a tap. So what I'm gonna do, put this in back here, I'm go grab my tap. I had to go grab my tap wrench. Okay, so now we're going to turn, let me get this in frame so you can see what I'm doing. This is inch and a half. The largest that this little inside uh, piece here is, is inch and three eighths. So we're going to turn this down to inch and three eighths. out of back yeah that is help those chips. I'm going to back this off a little bit. Alright, those are breaking.
That's close enough. We're a little hot now. Um, I'll just give it a quick polish just to get the tool marks out of there. That's not too bad. Um, this. Yeah, that tool bit kind of, the edge went on that tool bit. Um, I was going a little too hard at first, which probably just nicked the tip off of that tool bit. Uh, it needs to be resharpened, plus it could use a good chip breaker in there to help. I was kind of doing adjusting it by speed and feed, um, but you saw I did get some stringy chips in there. But overall, it cut. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch up that tool real quick. Um, I'm not going to bother grinding the chip break or anything in there because most of the machining on this is done. So let me just grind that real quick. We'll come here, we'll pot it off, we'll flip it around, we'll put an angle on this. Okay, we're going to come back in here and pot this off slightly longer than an inch and a half so I can face the other side. The reason why it's an inch and a half is because this bolt here sticks up one inch. So I need a room to be able to put an angle on the top and drill in the actual handle without going into that thread. So that's what that extra half inch is for. So let's see how this parts off here. That chatter that you get in there, you can overcome with pressure. The more the, the faster the feed, you can get beyond that chatter. And I'm doing this by hand, just in case it does get stuck, I can back out. It'll be easier to get constant pressure with, uh, with the feed, though. Okay, I didn't pot it off too bad. Okay, so what I'm gonna do let's take this out.
There we go, that's better. Alright, um, I'm going to set up to, I'm going to pull this out a little bit and set up to cut the angle on the end. So give me a minute, let me swing the compound around for and I'll explain why I'm doing that. Okay, so I have this compound set around to a 55 degree angle. And the reason for that is, is we need to make a flat so we're able to drill in at an angle to put in our handle. Now this handle that's on the tool post sticks off on an angle also. So that 55 degree angle coupled with the inch and a half length will give me enough clearance so I'm not whacking my knuckle off this uh, knob every time I go to use it. It should be maybe slightly steeper or just as steep as the angle um, of the handle on the tool post itself. Now the flat itself I want to be um, at least a half an inch uh, wide because we're going to be using a half inch rod that we're going to cut the end down to three eighths to thread it for a three eighths thread. And the reason why I wanted to cut this to at least an inch and a half is because I need the meat, that half inch of extra meat to be able to drill into here at an angle to be able to screw that handle in without hitting the actual uh, threaded section that's going to go over the tool post stub. So that's the reason for that extra half an inch. So I'm just going to whittle this away till I get a half inch of uh, flat on that angle. And it, uh, no matter what we do here, we're going to have a little bit of run out in this because we're moving it around in the three jaw chuck, but it's just a handle on the tool post, so it isn't going to make that much of a difference. Let me see if I can just maybe eliminate a little bit of that. That's about the same. Sometimes if you if you move it around and clock it to a certain thing, plus we're grabbing it on the outside of the jaw, so that's going to splay them out just a hair. So we're getting the same amount of run out on it no matter what. Now I could go crazy if I wanted to. This is this is um, an adjustable three jaw chuck. It's 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 a, an adjust true. So I could actually adjust this if I want. That's actually a little bit better. I could actually adjust this uh, to run perfectly true but for what we're doing it doesn't matter and the time doing it just really isn't going to make that much of a better product. So. Double check, I got at least a half an inch there, which I do, I got a little bit over. Okay, so I'm gonna mark center on that, and then we'll be able to go over the drill press 
and we'll drill a hole in that. So I kind of realized I screwed up. Um, that 60 degree, uh, 55 degree angle is actually too much, or too little. Um, the handle would stick out kind of at a funky angle. It wouldn't look, it, it'd be perfectly functional, it just wouldn't look right. So I increased it to 70 degrees. So now, um, I just had this square, there it is. Our handle will be sticking off, let me see if I can get this all in frame here, at an angle like that. So, uh, right there. So you can see I still have enough room to be able to go underneath it without whacking my knuckle off of this. And I also have good leverage. Before, if I did the um, 55 degree angle, it would be up more like that. So we just brought it down. Not a huge thing. Now, I want to make sure that when that handle's tightened, I'm not swung around in this way or this way or whatever. I want to stay in that general direction. So um, this is where making it out of hex would be ideal because you can just snug it down, then mark your section out. So, but it's no problem because I can just tighten it down and turn the whole tool block and it will snug itself up. So that's snug there. So what I'm going to do is just get a scribe and mark just on the top here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We just want the handle off in this direction towards the tailstock. We don't want it that way. So we mark that direction there. And that's where we're going to put the pole, uh, the, the handle. So we're going to mark half and halfway between here and we're going to drill down at that 70 degree angle. Okay, we have our hole drilled and tapped. And uh, we made just a slight adjustment on where it, where it was. So after I got everything uh, all put in, I realized that, you know, if you swing this compound around, um, that's going to be in the same spot. So if you have it over here and you want to get your compound to a certain angle, you don't want it, you don't want that handle to interfere with anything. So what I did is made it so that when you snug it down, pretty much all the way, where just about, well, not quite, I mean, I'm off a little bit, but we're just about in line with that compound. So that way there, this handle doesn't uh, interfere with anything if we got to swing this around to a funky angle. Now, I didn't do this on the drill press because the drill press is jammed in the corner. And I really, it's a bitch to pull out. And I have stuff set on that table over there and didn't want to move it. So let me just show you real quick how I, how I did that. Okay, you can see I got the drill press table tilted. And what I did was set a protractor um, to 70 degrees and stuck it right on there like that. And then against this edge here, all I did was hold my square up against the base and then just adjust it until those two pieces were parallel. That way I had a nice 70 degree angle. Put my piece in the vise here and I was able to um, to get it centered up and just drill it straight down. And uh, that's, that's how we did it. Just drilled it and then I uh, tapped it and then just gave it a little countersink around the edge. I didn't counter bore it because um, this is, I just had this clamped down with C-clamps and putting an end mill on that would put too much force and would break this off the C-clamps. Uh, I'm not really worried about it. I'm not going to end up counter boring it. Obviously you can if you want, but it's not really necessary. So that's pretty much how I made that um, that angled cut or that angled hole for that. So right now, let's head back to the lathe and just finish this up. Okay, so we're ready to uh, make the handle. So I'm going to, um, this is a piece of half inch that I happen to call it. And what I'm going to do is turn this down to 3 8 for a length of, I don't know, a quarter inch to 3 8 of an inch or so. Not super, super important as long as it doesn't bottom out in that hole. And also do the other end to fit our knob. And um, same thread. So this is half inch. i got to take 150 thousandths off of this. Let me face the end and then uh, do that.
So now all we need to do is thread this here. And Okay, just putting the die on backwards so that we're threaded up to that shoulder. So let's take her out, put her in, and uh, test it out. Well, there it is. Now you can see the uh, the slight angle difference here, just so I'm not knuckle busting every time I try to use this. And we're nice and snug right there. Right there, we're snug. We're slightly off the angle of the compound. We're off maybe. Uh, maybe about a half an inch, three quarters of an inch. Uh, worst case scenario, if that bugs me for any reason, you can just get a small spacer and just put it right underneath that, uh, right underneath this. Same thing if, is if you if you don't get this when it's tightened down. If you don't get this uh, handle at the exact position that you want, you can just take a spacer, some shim, sh some shims, a very small washer. Um, and get it to clock to where you want when it tightens down. But I mean, as you can see, we're nice and snug there. It's a little long. Um, I made this piece six inches, but I didn't take into account the actual knob. So I'm gonna leave it at that for now. If it annoys me for any reason, I can uh, shorten it. It's not locked tighted in yet. I'm gonna leave it loose for now until I play with it, for, uh, use it for a little bit, and figure out if I actually want it there. But, so now we're always attached to the tool post, so just simple loosen and tighten the clock this around instead of hunting for Mr. Wrench. So that's it there. Like I said, we'll uh, be using it for a little bit and we'll see if this length is uh, where we want it and see if this position is where we want it. If not, worst case scenario, put a little bit of, uh, make a little shim to sit underneath there to clock it maybe more over this way, if anything, and uh, we'll go from there. I just made it in line with the compound just so that way there I know it's not blocking anything. If it's over here and we wanted to swing this at a funky ankle, um, for me at least it would hit my my camera mount um, but other than that pretty happy with it so hope you guys enjoyed this project and uh, we'll think of something else to make and we'll see you on that one